And hello there! I'm Funky Monkey, and welcome to another edition of Funky Monkey at the Movies. With me as ever is my nameless producer. Hello. And tonight, possibly the last word that you'll get on Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Yes. And... I'm actually, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy I actually went to see it. I'm happy that I went to see it. I was expecting it to be so much worse. Yeah, so was I. I mean, I, it being so late in the run, I basically knew the entire plot. And, you know, I was expecting it to be terrible, but it really wasn't. Yeah, it, it just felt like Star Wars. Yeah. I mean, the plot was stupid. I think it had a really mm. stupid plot. But even though it was stupid, it wasn't bad. Well, it wasn't bad. I mean, it, it, it wasn't like in the same way that when I went back and reviewed when you went or back replayed and, and thought over Last The Jedi. Last Jedi, which I kind of thought was pretty awful in the end, even though I kind of gave it a high score because it was Star Wars. It's just, uh. Some of the plot parts were terrible. But in this one... Yeah. Even though the plot was stupid, it kind of worked. Well, you can give a lot of pass because it's Star Wars. Maybe not, because, you know, you shouldn't just give something uh, a pass on name recognition. Yeah, because that way people just make loads of money out of something and they sell you garbage. Very true. Very, very true. I would like to say... And probably I shouldn't really be discussing Last Jedi, but maybe the problem was that it didn't really feel like Star Wars. That, for whatever reason, for as much as Ryan Johnson did what he did and gave us something... Well, the uh, casino planet. Yeah, I would have just cut that entire section out of the entire film. Also, um, any time Benny so Del Toro's in a science fiction film, he's irritated. Well, that's your kind of thing. Yeah. We won't go into it. So, yeah, but this one just, it just felt more like Star Wars. And what I wanted to get onto, yeah, mm -hmm. was that you could argue... Yeah. I mean, much as you can say that the uh, entire first six episodes were the tale of Anakin Skywalker... Mm hmm you could very much argue that a large part of the story was also to do with Palpatine and his machinations was the word that I was looking for to creating a galactic empire yeah although he or really did seem one. like he'd gone over to some form of cartoonish super evil here with Sith rituals and all the like you know, and dark magics and such things. It all just seemed very much overblown for it. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's like I said, really. It was a stupid plot the whole... Palpatine was secretly alive. The whole time. And, he, and was completely manipulating things from behind the scenes. Because he'd made Snoke in a tank. Yeah. Incredible. Smoke a Snoke in a tank. Buy yours now. <laughs> Yeah. But in the end, I suppose it can be argued that the message of The Last Jedi, blood and family lines don't really matter, mm -hmm. and a Jedi can come from anywhere, even the grandchild of a Sith. Well, yeah. Well, here's another thought for you, All right? How about, like, obviously... The Force Awakens was a lot like A New Hope. Mm -hmm. This one, do you feel it compares to Return of the Jedi? Because I was getting a lot of Return of the Jedi vibes. I mean, there's even the bit where the Emperor shows the fleet going to get destroyed and he's about to gloat. That was very Return of the Jedi-ish. Yeah, know? the echoes of Return of the Jedi. But that whole sequence was very sort of back and forth in a way that a lot of modern films seem to be. Hope arises, hope is dashed, hope arises, hope is dashed, hope arises, hope's about to be dashed yet again, but at the last moment, the hero makes the final move and wins the day. Well, you've always got to have the um, darkest before the dawn moment. 
Yeah. There's like all of the times that they play it back and forth. Well, it was a bit stupid, like how um, the Emperor suddenly got the ability to shoot all this force lightning out to blow up all those ships. And you're there, just just watching and thinking, yeah, that's just stupid, crazy amounts of power. Plus, have what we seen enough in science fiction films or fantasy films lately, big laser beam-esque things shooting up into the sky. It's becoming kind of a trope now. Have we? Well, what about the Avengers? Oh, Avengers 1, Suicide where uh, they had the hole in the sky. Oh, yeah. Suicide Squad will give you. Yeah, so there's lots of things out there, if you look, with like big laser beamy kind of things shooting up into the sky. Uh, it's becoming a little You could argue yeah. that uh, that was a thing in the first Ghostbusters as well. Yeah, that was 1984 or something, though, so, you know, that kind of gets a pass for the time being. All right, then. Remember when they were sinking into the quicksand and Finn was like, I need to tell you something. While a lot of people might think it's, oh, he secretly loved Ray. I think it's actually that he wanted to tell her he could detect the force, that he was in fact a force sensitive. Because like, it, cause during that film he kept going on a lot about, oh, I've got this feeling, I can feel this and I can feel that. So to me, I would have liked to, to see... Finn become some kind of Jedi. But maybe that's a thing for another time. Uh, maybe that's something to put together in fanfic. I think it worked well as kind of like a buddy film, because it was good that finally all those characters got together. Because you never really saw Poe and Rey um, together much in the other films. Yeah, they were kept apart a lot. Yeah, and then in um, the middle one... Um, Last Jedi. The Last Jedi. Finn was off on his adventures with... Um, no, we pointed that out in the last one, in foreign territories, the uh, Last Jedi part. Because, you know, definite articles yeah, be what they are. Yeah? Uh-huh. It was actually, the the was plural. So he's pointing out that maybe there were two Last Jedi. Maybe, so. Kind of there was in um, Return of the Jedi. Kind yeah. of, because, like, obviously because there Vader was Luke. turned from the dark side. Well, I was to... thinking there was Luke, and there was Leia, because then uh, we found yeah. out that Leia was Luke's um, sister. Yeah. Was some of that CGI with Leia in that film? Because some parts of it, she looked a little bit weird. I don't know. Maybe. Well, they had to have her die, because Carrie Fisher died. Yeah. And who was that mysterious um, Poe friend, girlfriend person? Don't know. I'm going to look up who the actress was, because I don't know, kind of the voice sounded familiar, but I couldn't tell who it was. Uh, maybe you should have sat through the credits and found the character name. Yeah. Oh, well. I thought that spy, the first spy they met, the alien, he sounded a bit like the Joker, so I wondered if Mark Hamill had done the voice for him. Uh, maybe, maybe. Well, that was another thing that I wanted to uh, speak in defence of Ray and how all these people keep saying, uh, oh, she's Mary Sue, blah, blah, blah. She's like, a Jedi. Well, yeah, this is it, see. I don't think that the power like that she exhibits is like intrinsic to her because, as they say in the other Star Wars films, the Force can control you. The Force partially controls your actions and partially responds to your commands. Yeah. As so, Obi-Wan told Luke back in episode 4. Exactly. So, a lot of the time, with her sudden, amazing abilities, I think that's actually the Force acting through her. I don't think that's so much her, because it's like, no other Jedis. So it's like manifesting through her. Very much so. And I mean, it could have been anybody, really, but because she's like related to the, um, the Emperor as well, and she's... She's um, obviously going to be force sensitive. I think he just he sort of picked her. It was her destiny kind of thing. Yep. I mean, especially with Kylo Ren and his Knights of Ren and their being Sith and whatever. Yeah, but he turned from the Sith as well. Yeah, it's true. She saved him. Or she saved Ben Stolo. After she killed Kylo Ren. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Although it does raise disturbing questions around the Emperor and what he got up to. 
I mean... Well, hey, let's let's not forget, we had, like, a 15-year period where Senator and then Chancellor Palpatine hadn't get, gotten all sissed up. And, I mean, a lot of people these days, a lot of these ladies these days are going for their silver foxes. Yeah. You know, sexy he, daddies are a thing. He was quite old, wasn't he, when, um, even when we first introduced to him, he was, like, would have been in his... 50s or something in um, The Phantom Menace when we first meet him so hey man knows what he got up to in those years hey man one thing I've learned from my schlepping around the interwebs is that chicks dig that kind of thing yeah. <laughs> I live for that okay okay let's yeah, wrap it up let's wrap it up you should let's cut that part out <laughs> that's definitely the part that should get chopped out I think <laughs> I'm leaving it in. Anyways, yeah. anyways, let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. Come on. Final thoughts then. And score. Uh, well, I mean, I thought in some ways it was kind of disaster control after the last film. And it just really brought it back to um, being more Star Warsy. I think. Uh, action was good. Music was good. I think that, that was a lot of the... What made it more Star Wars was they definitely tied back into a lot of the uh, the old Star Wars musical themes. The acting was okay. I don't think a lot of the... I mean, across the whole trilogy, I don't think the cast are amazing. I, mean, I don't think Adam Driver, or whatever his name was, is really cut out to be a villain. Maybe. And the plot was silly. But overall... It just worked, I think. So, I'm going to give it probably about an eight and a half. Ooh, high praise indeed. Yeah. Well, yeah. And I was very surprised. Let's put it this way. I, I was surprised and happy that it turned out so well. Yeah, that's what we surprised. Yeah, that yeah. Was. Well, for me, it was a big old bowl of comfort food. That came at me at a time when I was hungry for something. And I don't know that anything really deserves a 10 out of 10, but I'm definitely going to give it a 9 out of 10, if only because it came along at a time that I really needed it and delivered me a message that really resonated with me. And yeah, that's what I think. So, this has been Funky Monkey and his nameless producer. Yeah. All of the uh, links are below. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you at the movies. Bye.